the Texas Longhorns. And it's strange to have them towards the bottom of the Big 12. You would expect with that much talent that they would be significantly better than they were last season. Uh, Disastrous first year for Steve Sarkeesian. But I will say, it, it was not an offensive problem. It's not his side of the ball that had an issue. It was the defense. And we'll go on and pull up those numbers there. Defense number 102 in PPA per drive. Number 94 in success rate allowed rushing. Uh, number 105 in passing success rate allowed. I mean, just just abysmal. Like, you could tell that this team did not play hard. We'll, uh, we'll start off on... Well, let's look at this. Okay, they went 5-7 and seven last year. Post-game win expectancy numbers should have been around 5.56 and 6.44, so closer to 6-6 six and six than 5-7. and seven. Uh, Their projected SP Plus record is about 7.5 wins, so 7.5 and 4.5, either 7-5 and five or 8-4, and four, somewhere around there. I think they're going to be better than that, but that's because I've got a lot. Uh, I, I, I got a lot of faith. How's that? In Quinn Ewers. I think he and that offense will be able to put up points at a ridiculous level, and I don't think the defense can get worse. I think bringing in Gary Patterson is big. We'll start off on the offensive side of the ball. They bring back 59% of the offense, but I don't think that that matters. Their roster strength is number four in the country on offense. Now, defense is number 16, which lets you know how absurd it was that that they gave up as much as they did last year. But on offense, uh, number four, roster strength there, I you know, the offense was number 45 in PPA per drive, at number 44 rushing success rate. Passing success rate was number 60. Uh, and they were number 53 in explosive play rate. The offense coordinator is Kyle Flood, but let, let's not kid ourselves. This is Sarkeesian's offense. Uh, it, wasn't an off, it wasn't an issue in 2021 at all. Number eight in points per play, number 21 in points per scoring opportunity. When they did get down into the red zone, when they did get into the 40-yard line, the opponent's 40, they were able to score. Uh, Quinn Ewers comes in from Ohio State. Uh, the wide receiver, Isaiah Nair from Wyoming. I'd pair him with Worthy and Robinson. I mean, just playmakers all over this offense. And that doesn't even include Billingsley and Ajay Hall, etc. If you can keep those guys... Uh, could, I'm not concerned. What's the word I'm looking for? If you can keep those guys in, right? Keep them in on the team, then you can do that. Uh, they, you'll have a, just a bevy of opportunities for these guys. I mean, they are they're going to be able to make plays. Absolutely. Offensive line did play pretty well. They were number 16 in offensive line yards, number 14 in stuff rate uh, allowed, number 45 in havoc rate allowed. They, they returned three starters on the offensive line with 689-plus snaps. The rest of the guys are very talented, but they are inexperienced. It's going to take a little bit of time. But Kyle Flood, really good offensive line coach. I fully expect him to be able to work with these guys. Let's move over to the defense. This is where it becomes a problem. I, I still have issues with his last name. Defensive coordinator Pete Kwiatkowski. <laughs> I hope I said that right. Uh, he's got to work on culture here badly. Uh, I mean, they, they were just bad at every level. In, in 2022, you got to wonder if Gary Patterson coming in can help that out a little bit. Now, it is a little strange to mention Gary Patterson as being somebody that could help the defense because of how bad TCU was on defense last year. But regardless, this is somebody that understands defense and understands how to build a culture, even if things went off the rails uh, at TCU. They're returning 7 out of 10 players that got 400-plus snaps. Defensive line and linebackers were actually number 41 in stuff rate. But all the other rushing stats were just blah. Like I said, number 94 in rushing success rate allowed. They only brought in two transfers. So that, that kind of lets me know that they trust the guys that they got. They just need them to uh, work hard. They need to find a scheme that fits. The linebacker forward, uh, Brockermeyer, Overshown, uh, they combined for 17 tackles for loss last year. You got four defensive linemen that had two sacks apiece. Like, there are dudes that you can work with on this defense. Uh, this team has got, they are projected favorites in 10 games. Now, the two losses uh, are the two where they'll be underdogs, Alabama and Oklahoma. But, you know, we've seen this before. Their win total sits at 8. The over is minus 135. Let's talk about the keys to the season before we actually talk about the schedule here. Uh, you can score points without establishing a strong culture, 
but you can't play defense without that. They either didn't want to play hard or they didn't know how to play hard or the scheme was just completely wrong last year. Regardless, I think that they will have that at least somewhat figured out this season. I think it's going to help more. Uh, will viewers be able to clean up the turnover margin? They were number 85 in turnover margin last year. They were number 104 in interceptions gained. The defense was last year. Uh, they were number 57 in turnovers lost. So 10 interceptions, 7 fumbles. Like it, you got to get the defense to be a little more aggressive and go after the ball. you got to be able to get some more turnovers. And I think that viewers can maybe limit the number of interceptions. You know, they, Casey Thompson had nine of them by himself last year. Hudson Card had one. Everything kind of hinges on being able to build a culture here. And I don't, I don't know if I trust Sark to build that. Like, obviously, he was able to learn something at the University of Alabama. But, you know, toughness is, is certainly something that's built inside of a, a football program. Maybe a rejuvenated Gary Patterson helps that. Maybe. I, I mean, we're just going to have to see. There are four games that you could list as toss-ups where the projected final score is within eight points, so a one-score game. Uh, but they're projected favorites in ten games, like I said, I've got them going nine and three, like, and I've always kind of been a a Texas homer because I believe that with that amount of talent, that you should be able to win more than just you know six games or or not even what they did. Last, I mean, they got to five last year. I think they're going to go nine and three. I've got a loss to TCU. I've got a loss to Oklahoma State. I've got a loss to Alabama. Could they lose to Oklahoma? Yeah. Could they lose to Iowa State? Yeah. Like they could lose to anybody on the schedule. They could also beat anybody on the schedule. So 9-3 and three feels about right to me. Uh, would it surprise me if they win 10 games, 11 games? No, not at all. Like I, I, It would surprise me if they beat Alabama, but anybody else on the schedule is beatable. They will be able to have a good record so long as they get the defense shored up because I have no doubts that the offense is going to be awesome. That's, that is the way that I think this team will be built is you're going to be able to score points, and all you got to do is be able to stop the other team some. Last year, they weren't able to stop them ever. So, so I'm going to roll with Texas going 9-3 and three here. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.